Right, this video is more of a appeal for help more than a, a, a repair video. You might have, some of you might have seen that I started a video on uh, repairing this thing because one of the amplifiers was messing around. It also developed another fault with the CRT where the display was, I thought, was flashing over, which I thought I'd fixed. Um, but it started to do something very strange where the display would sort of blink and the bright dot would appear. Uh, and I initially thought that was an HV flashover problem, like the HT was jumping around and adjusting the sort of like the, the intensity and things like that. Uh, so I, uh, I was using it, uh, trying to get fix the fault with the amplifier, uh, and uh, this display b became more and more of a problem. I thought, well, I've got to fix this display because there's no point in fixing the rest of the thing as the display is going to pack up, and. So I was, uh, the unit was on and the display was sort of like flickering away. It was displaying correctly, but the display was sort of flickering away. So I thought well, I'll go quick, quickly round with a uh, freezer spray and just to see if I can find anything obviously wrong. Now this is all like the sort of keystroke generator. This is the bit that draws the graphics from what I can tell. And I went round with um, a freezer spray and I sort of, I, w I went round this section here and these two chips here. And somewhere around this section here, the display went nuts. Um, it just drew a load of sort of like vertical and crossed lines. Um, I thought, oh, one of these chips is faulty. So I've bought a couple of spare replacement chips, placed those. These are DAX on the board and it's no different. Now, the only other thing I can possibly see is this chip here that seems to control the intensity. Um, but this is more of a question for people who actually know this display unit. This is the HP 1345A display unit. Um, it's famous for displaying the graphics in the, the video, um, the uh, science fiction uh, film War Games back in, 19, in the 80s, where uh, a, a kid and his girlfriend hack into, uh, I think it's NASA, and uh, manage to get control of this sort of big computer and uh, start a global uh, warfare. I don't know if you've seen it. It's quite a good film, actually. But the graphics were all done on HB 1345A, which is what this display unit is. Um, they just added colours and things to it to make it look a bit more spectacular. So basically what's happened is this display is not working anymore. Um, and without this display, this thing's pretty useless. Um, a replacement LCD display is sort of like 300 quid. Um, and normally I would probably consider doing that, but because the rest of the system isn't that reliable, I'm loath to spend 300 pounds on something that's probably not worth a lot more than that anyway. So I'm going to show you what it does on the display. And I want, if anyone's got any real ideas, I don't want sort of like, sorry, I don't, I don't want to mean to, appear rude but a lot of people just sort of say have you changed all the capacitors i don't want any of that crap it it's not capacitors the power supply is okay one of the chips has failed and i don't know which one it is i sort of running out of ideas with this thing and to be honest with you the amount of use it gets it uh if this display is not going to work it might as well go down the tip because i've spent so much money on this thing and i'm sort of like a bit peed off with it to be honest with you so i'm going to show you what it does on the display um, as I say, I've changed all these chips. These are analog to digital converters, uh, which I initially thought was the problem. Hasn't fixed the problem. So let me turn it on and show you what it does. Now, it doesn't matter if it's on uh, its inbuilt diagnostic screen or it's running from its uh, from the actual signals from the actual thing itself. It's the same thing. It's not even bloody working now. Okay, so let me just check, see what I've done. Maybe they put the chip in the wrong way. No display at all. You can see it's actually trying to boot, and the, the thing's working. It's just the display's packed up. So let me just sort, see what I've done wrong, and we'll come back. Okay, that's what it does. Okay, so there's something wrong with the way it's... The display is obviously working fine, but it's drawing the image incorrectly. Now I think it's down to this board here, and it's possibly this chip here. Uh, now this is the intensity control chip. Now I was freezing around this area, and it was at the point when I was freezing around this area here, the display did this. So I'm pretty confident it's around this area here. I think it's a couple of op amps. 
these are all bloody awkward numbers to get hold of um, but this chip actually gets quite hot after a while but if anyone knows what possibly could be the problem with this um, and had the experience with these displays please let me know um, because I'm running out of ideas with this thing I've spent too much money on it I don't want to start shotgunning chips the only other option I've got is to go through the whole of the schematic and try and work out what the hell's wrong with it but um, at the moment yeah I'm running out of ideas getting a bit sick of it the trouble is I've got all my other gear all the other test equipment that's sitting on, to on top of it like the spectrum analyzer on the bench I can't do anything else in the workshop until I get this fixed or chuck it out we're looking at these um, inputs to these op amps here. These two op amps, there's four of these. It's, this is one side, there's two on the other side. I'll show you on the uh, unit in a minute. They come out with these DACs, um, and this is what I initially thought was the problem, one of the DACs had failed, because uh, I was freezing around that area, uh, and that's when it's packed up and hasn't come back. Now, I replaced two of the DACs. They uh, managed to track them down on eBay. They weren't too expensive, so I thought I'd take a chance on those, replaced them, no difference. Um, but if I look on the output of these two pins here, this the output of this op amp here and the op amp here, one's got an output and one hasn't. Um, and that's the same on the other side as well. Let me just show you on the on the unit itself. I'm using my um, Tektronix TDS3012 because it fits easier on this unit and uh, it hasn't been used for a while, so I thought we'd uh, take it out for a spin. So these are the uh, op amps that we're looking at here, 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 here. As I said, there's four, and these are the associated DACs that are controlling it. So I'm looking at pin 10 output of all of these chips, uh, and we should see like a sort of like a, a video signal on these. So this is pin 12 here. So this is pin 10, and you see the sort of like the staircase um, waveform you get on a, on a uh, TV, and that's the sort of thing you'd expect. That's good, pin 10. I'll go to pin 10 here. Similar thing when you got it connected. Connection's a bit flaky. Let's try it again. There we go. So we've got a good good signal there. Uh, we'll go pin 10 on this one. Bear in mind all these chips are around the different ways. So if it looks like I'm on the wrong pin, it's not. It's the chips are all inverted. That's pin 10 of this one. Nothing. You see there's no output at all. This chip's been changed, pretty sure it's not that. Uh, and when we look at pin 10 on this, the last one, and there's our similar sort of video waveform. So, coming back to the screen here, um, it looks like either the inputs are wrong to this or this amplifier's gone faulty. Now, the other reason why I think these op amps are faulty is I'll show you this as well. Now this is the first thing I was sort of like pointing me in the general direction. I was poking around last night, a bit forlorn and sort of thinking, oh, I don't know what's wrong with this, I think I'm going to give up. Um, and it was, I'll show you what I found that was a bit unusual. I'm going to just look at the cans of these um, op amps. Now, I don't know what they're supposed to be. If we look at this first one here, we see we've got minus 15 on that. The second one here same minus 15 and we look at the good one on this side minus 15 and the one I think is 40 minus 13.39 so that sort of pointed me into the direction of that op amp failing now that's a fairly common op amp uh, off the top of my head I can't remember the number but um, I'm going to replace that op amp I don't think it's working it does seem to be running slightly hot on the other ones as well from the sort of like the finger touch um, but what's really annoying in the meantime after all the calibration hassles I've had and I, w I did upload a video but I did abort it because it was just getting so drawn out and sort of confusing I've had a lot of problems with the preamplifier the right channel 2 preamplifier which I finally fixed I think by getting a new set of uh, matched transistors it seems to have settled itself down but in the meantime this poxy display is packed up so uh, yeah next bit will be replacing these op amps and for those interested at home the HP part number is there we go uh, 18260930 and they're a fairly standard op amp so I'm going to replace the one here uh, just there and hopefully that will fix it